This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by We Use Coins. Dot com. Your friends and family and people you know in the general public speak out even if you think they'll think you're crazy and they'll think you're nuts. Because the thing is, if they never hear a contrary opinion, most people will never think about a contrary opinion. And I have lots and lots of examples I can point to where I said something I believed into somebody and they responded, that's ridiculous, that's absurd, go away. And five years later they said, you know, I thought about what you said. And I said, you did? It didn't sound like you were thinking about it. But if you say it and they hear it, they might think about it. And if they hear it again, they might think about it even more. But if you don't say anything, most people will never think outside the box. They will never question what they perceive as popular opinion, even if it's totally not popular opinion. And I have to say, Hollywood has done a magnificent job of fabricating a false popular opinion. If all you watch is movies coming out of Hollywood, you would swear that there are three conservatives in the country and they're racist, rich, evil, greedy millionaires. Now, if you actually ask people, it's a whole lot more than that. But if you can fabricate a reality that bullies people into agreeing with you, and for the record, I'm not liberal or conservative, but if you can bully people into not voicing contrary opinions, you win. And it actually makes you feel more alone if you don't say what you think, because there's not a chance for anybody else to say, you know, I kind of agree. And what's awesome about Porkfest is there's a whole bunch of people saying, you know, I kind of agree. And this is what scares the people in power. When a bunch of us get together and say, we don't really want to oppress each other, we just kind of want to peacefully coexist. That is the threat to them. And that's why they want to intimidate us into not saying what we think. Now, so that has to do with the, the general public and your friends and family and what you say to them. There's actually another reason that a lot of people don't usually think of for why you have to speak the truth. And that is the effect on the state mercenaries. Whether they're soldiers or cops, state, federal, local, I don't care, DEA, IRS, I don't care what level. The mercenaries of the state, if they look out at the world and they hear every once in a while one person saying, you're the bad guy, they can comfortably keep committing evil thinking that everybody else is just fine with it. Again, to the analogy of, the, of slavery, if there's some guy whose job it is to hunt down runaway slaves and drag them back to their master to be whipped to death, and nobody ever says, you shouldn't do that, you're evil, they can think, well, everybody seems to approve. You know, it doesn't even matter what I think because everyone else seems to be just fine with this. But if one person and then another and then another gets in his face and says, what you are doing is evil. I might just criticize you. Somebody else might actually try to stop you by force. But I'm at least going to point out you are not the good guy. And ironically, you are not doing him a favor by not pointing that out. And let me bring it back to the present day. You are not doing a DEA agent a favor by not telling him that his job is inherently evil. He was indoctrinated into the belief in authority. He was indoctrinated into believing that if the politicians do their magic political rituals and call it law, it must be good. And until somebody says to him, that's not good, you are the bad guy, he's never going to think about it. Now the first time somebody says that, he's going to say, shut up or I'll pistol whip you. Second time he says that, he'll probably do the same thing. The third, the tenth, the hundredth time, there's three things that might happen. One, he might think, am I the good guy? In which case, great, it gives him a chance to actually be a good human being by choice. Second option is he thinks, everybody hates me, I want a different job, that's good enough for me. I'll take that. And that, that's happened pretty much with the IRS. Everybody hates the IRS, and for good reason. There's a huge turnover rate there because everybody hates them. And so intimidation, that's the second one, or just public disapproval. If that's what it takes to make somebody stop doing evil, okay, I'll go for that.
And the third, which I would prefer it to not have to get to that, but actual resistance if somebody says, you know, what you're doing is evil and I'm going to forcibly defend myself against you. Now, I would love for things to work before it gets to that, but that's the third option. If enough people recognize you're not the good guy, I don't care if you have a badge, I don't care if you have a law, what you're doing is initiating violence against innocent people, that is wrong. Some of us will speak out against it, some of us will actually forcibly resist. But if nobody says anything, you don't even give the unthinking drone a chance to reconsider his thought process and his beliefs. Bitcoins, Bitcoins, I hate everyone who joins for gaining its additional anonymousness, engaging in unregulated busyness. We use coins.com is one place where this wicked people have this wicked fun. I think my head is going about to explode. Stamped him out before another single person go. Two. We use coins. Dot com.